Greetings everyone and in my final video of the day I'm going to review part one of uh, Masters of the Universe Revelation. This uh, series on Netflix has uh, gotten a lot of hate. It's got, as I uh, mentioned in a previous video I did a couple months ago before the show even premiered. I know I'm late to this party, but um, here goes my take on it. My hot take, if you will, because everyone else has made one. Um, I've seen this show, uh, first of all, wrongly identified many, many times as He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, or He-Man Masters of the Universe Revelation. He-Man is not in the title of this series. I've seen that going around on the internet, even though it's easily debunkable. He was never in the title. Yes, Skeletor and He-Man were featured prominently in the promotional artwork and in the promotional video package as such as the trailer and merchandise. But he was never in the title, nor was Skeletor, though I've seen those claims, especially when it comes to He-Man, thrown all over the internet. So, debunking that right away. That's a non-argument. I've also seen the allegation this is a bait and switch. Uh, perhaps there's more merit to that in the fact that, as I previously mentioned, the two characters are all over the promotional um, artwork and videos. But um, I don't really think so because it never says they're going to be the stars of this um, show as much as people would like them to indicate that. Now I've also, uh, so setting that aside, that's a neutral or non-issue in my opinion, but I'll give you maybe a neutral if I'm being generous. Now the third of the big four complaints I've heard about this is that Kevin Smith and, the, and some other members of the production team, more so Kevin Smith, lied uh, when they were confronted that this was going to be quote-unquote the Tila show. Uh, well, what did you expect them to say, even if it is the Tila show, you know, which I don't believe it is, but did you want them to spoil the plot to the uh, people outside of the um, comics gate bubble that uh, didn't follow this, you know, closely? And, you know, the minute they confirmed it, it would have been grabbed up by the media and would have ruined it for all the fans, you know, old and new. So do you want them to ruin the whole plot of the show by confirming these leaks? The bigger problem here, in my opinion, um, isn't so much denying the leaks, but the fact the leaks occurred. And there are other leaks that appear to be occurring now, uh, which uh, should be um, plugged up, in my opinion. I won't mention any of them here because I don't want to spoil things for people. Part two, uh, which I enjoyed, part one, you know quite immensely to be honest so I don't want to uh, ruin it for other people like myself who have either enjoyed it or who think about that they might watch it and enjoy it in the future so I'm not going to mention what these leaks are but um, if they are from the same source they'll probably be accurate it's a previous round of leaks and they're going to spoil things again so the bigger question is who is leaking or perhaps more than one person is leaking and they need to plug up those leaks and those people probably are mid to low level they should be removed for leaking because they're ruining the plot and ruining the viability of the series and the enjoyment for people, you know, potentially. Um, now on to the fourth big criticism, which is laughable because I see, oh, we don't like it, you know, that um, He-Man is sidelined and Skeletor through most of part one are sidelined, that they're defeated, you know, in the massive battle at the beginning and, you know, all of Eternia loses his power and He-Man sacrificed himself to make sure that Skeletor can, you know, gain the ultimate power. What did you want them to do instead? Did you want this just to be a Monster of the Week type show like the original He-Man was? Probably a Plot of the Week type show, I should say. The original He-Man was in the 80s. I mean, I've looked back at those and most of those episodes are not good. You know, when I was a little kid watching them in the um, 90s, you know, in reruns, they were okay. But even then, by the time I was like 8, 9, maybe 10 at most, I outgrew them. Because... You know, stuff like Ben 10 was coming around and Yu-Gi-Oh! And these were not, you know, which maybe they're false too, but these were not sophisticated plots. I mean, Yu-Gi-Oh! Or even um, some episodes of Pokemon, Ben 10. Make this look. Make original He-Man look like, Sha you know, they look like Shakespeare compared to original He-Man. There is no plot. There was just a bunch of silly jokes, a bunch of swords and sorcery battles, and, you know... It's cliché that the villain is always defeated at the end. You know, sometimes by a trick, usually by outright strength, and, you know, seldom ever do you have a two-parter, and then they move on to the next episode. It's just episodic or serialized. It's more serialized TV than episodic. 
There were a few elements episodic, but a lot of things don't are really never mentioned again. There were a few good episodes, like the one where they reveal Tila's origins. There is a two-parter there they have with the haunt, you know, the quote-unquote haunted mansion one. But most of them, and you know, where Uncle loses his powers, you know, you know, thanks to his own stupidity. Uh, but most of them are just, you know, very formulaic, you know, like sitcom, 19, you know, 50s through ni- 1980s through early 90s, you know. It's just very formulaic and uh, very predictable and um, non-episodic and just serialized and just good mindless fun. But you have to really be dumbed down to enjoy it. Is that what people want it? I, I myself prefer something original. I like this new plot where they took He-Man and Skeletor of the equation rather than just ha 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 ha, you know, He-Man, I'm going to like take your uh, power and I'm going to like rule or Grayskull, no you're not Skeletor, blah blah blah, and battle, then you defeat it. Uh, you know, then they do it again the next week, then one, uh, you know, next episode in this case, uh, wa- uh, rinse, wash, and repeat in infinitum, you know, forever. So I'm glad I like this, and I like uh, that we're getting um, a deeper plot, and we're get also getting the fact that um, some um, how should we put it address that uh, Tila you know been lied to her whole life. She still don't know she's the sorceress's biological daughter. She still don't know about that. It's another lie being kept from her. Now um, you know, but she doesn't know of course about Adam. Now I've heard another criticism. Which I really don't know if I want to address too deeply, but I'll just mention in passing that this is a queer bait and LGBTQ plus uh, propaganda, uh, you know, this show. Because Tila has like a friend, Andrea, there, or Andrea, probably saying her name wrong, who um, people also complain about she's race swap, but that's neither here nor there because they have like all the characters are white and most of them are blonde or redhead, so what the hell do you want them to do? You know, a little diversity is good. I mean, once again, it's like the rinse, wash, and repeat plot of, you know, the throwaway episode every uh, week, or in this case, every other episode, well, every episode, you know, only a few that are dev- deviate from that in the original series. Do you want that? Do you want that? It's like a scene, the, you know, in the flashback with, uh, you know, where they go to pre turny well, not really a flashback, where they go to pre turny and they meet, like, the original King Grayskull, and he's, like, darker skinned, he's, like, African American, or perhaps some type of indigenous of a person, if we're an allegory in our own world, like an analog, and people are like, oh, I hate that, and I'm like, well, what else do you want? Do you want two big, muscly guys, you know, that are blonde, running around, look almost like clones, like the original version, that's what he did in the remake, you know, with, with He-Man slash Adam, and they also are not happy that Adam doesn't have the same build as He-Man. I always found that stupid when I was a kid, that people couldn't tell the difference, they looked and, you know, all the same, they acted different, but that was it, but they looked and sounded the damn same down to the build and you know square jaw and everything like what the hell you know can people tell the difference this just makes people look like they're not so stupid i mean you've had this thing you had that complaint with superman in comic books but they addressed it at one point and said that he's got ma- magically enchanted glasses from the freaking sorcerer supreme of the universe and uh, that continuity in dc dr fate so the cast a spell on people so that's why they can't tell you know it, it helps you know he also changes his voice and his look of his hair and stuff but that that's why they can't tell even though we look similar or very identical in my opinion in the same build it's because there's magical enchantment they've never kind of made that you know any claim with he-man that there's a magical enchantment so the fact that they change the build and the look of them you know in the jawline especially the musculature that makes sense I means they still look too much alike in my opinion but it doesn't make people look quite so stupid so people are, like, upset um, about that because they say, like, Tila has a girlfriend. No, she doesn't. Can't people just be friends without having any kind of sexual, you know, or romantic attraction? If anything, if we're going by the continuity continuing from the old series and a little bit we've seen the first couple episodes, Tila has, like, a major crush on He-Man. I mean, I've seen people say that, you know, she's like a jilted girlfriend or something, her reaction. That's more, in my opinion, what it is. And her becoming like a man-hating lesbian and like, you know, dirtied against everybody. I mean, there are some elements that are being angry, but I think that's reaching. And that's reaching because it's people seeing what they want to see. I like this whole fetch quest that they're going on. As for Orko dying, I'm sure they'll bring him back anyway. So they're not even going to talk about that as it's an non-issue. That's like fake outrage. Because who the hell's favorite character who watched the original series was ever Orko? Maybe a handful of people, but most people hate it. The guy's guts and found him annoying, even as a little kid. By the time I got to be about, even before I got through that phase, about seven or eight, I, I was getting so I hated Orko and found him annoying and stupid. And the things he did really grated on my nerves. 
So uh, anyone who said that Orca was their favorite character, they loved him from the original or remake or anything, they're lying. They're lying. Like, maybe, you know, in all fairness, maybe 5-10% of people like Orca, but that's about it. Most people are just lying if they say they like Orca and didn't... If they did say they never found him annoying, they're definitely lying. In, you know, in my view, they're definitely lying. So a lot of these complaints about uh, the show were non-issues, in my opinion. I give it a 4 out of 5 stars. The only reason I wouldn't give it a 5 out of 5 on that scale is because I think Tila's anger was a little bit overboard in the scene, you know, with um, the king and queen, you know. Because, I mean, they just lost their side and they've been lied to too. And the way she overreacted and then withdrew from society seemed initially a little bit selfish. And I also didn't like, um, that's half a star for that. And I also didn't like the fact that um, characters like Moss Man get killed off so quickly when they could contribute a bit more to the plot. As for Orko, as I said, I don't care. Um, as for Skeletor, you know, once they find Adam and Preternia and bring him back and they're put their sword finally together and they go to the different uh, realms of Eternia or like Hell and meet Skeletor, that was cool, by the way. A uh, cool nod. And, um, you know, you have uh, Skeletor pop up and um, I won't say from where, it's a little weird. But uh, he pops up and he, you know, kills Adam there from behind with, like, a weapon and then grabs a sword and he becomes Skelegod. That was epically cool, in my opinion. I'm very interested to see what happens next. Like, the futility of it, their whole quest, they went through all that for nothing. You know, and then, the, you know, and the world is dying and they have to save it and they went through all that for nothing. Oh, and I should probably touch on it quick. I didn't, um, you know, the thing with uh, Triclops or, you know, becoming the leader of a cult that worships technology, you know. Uh, not 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 my cup of tea, but uh, I uh, that's why I kind of took off an extra half star, cause, you know, maybe a quarter star, uh, because um, you know, a quarter star for the other thing I mentioned, because I, while it is an interesting new direction to take the character in, I'm not really a fan of it. Uh, the techno cold is too much like things we've seen in other shows like um, Star Wars and Star Trek recently, so no, I'm not a fan of that. So I guess it is some way to freshen up his character, and that's what this is all about, freshening up the characters and giving them something to do rather than just those silly, you, you know, monster slash plot of the week shows, which just wouldn't fly with modern audiences. Heck, with adult audiences, even then it didn't, didn't fly, let alone with um, modern audiences. I mean, come on now, let's be real. This was always like a kid's show. It was a kid's show through the 80s and reruns in the 90s. It was not like this vast masterpiece of like science fiction or it wasn't like, um, it wasn't even as good as those ones I mentioned like Ben 10 that had more of a continuous plot. Um, it was just a silly show, you know, sword, sword, sorcery, muscle men and ladies and wizards and stuff for kids to watch. They plopped the kids down into in front of the TV and that's what they watched back then, you know, before we had the internet or the internet was widespread. Gasp! Such a time existed, boys and girls and non-binary and whoever else. Yeah, you know, shocking, but it did. You know, we were back in the Dark Ages in the Stone Age. And it was also to sell cartoon, you know, cartoons. It was a cartoon to sell merchandise, you know, to sell action figures. That's what it was. This is far superior. I'm really interested to see how they get out of this in closing. And all you people are complaining, you know, whining and crying about the woke and the SJW and the social justice. <sighs> Uh, you're just seeing something that isn't there, or at least isn't there as much as you think it is. You're just projecting, in my opinion. And um, that's all I've got to say. I really enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to um, uh, part two. I, uh, like I say, I promised everybody this uh, review. I liked it. I liked many of the Easter eggs and nods. I liked the overall plot. I liked Tila's quest. I liked um, the, you know, Eternia without He-Man and Skeletor, you know, two big players, you know, taking them off the table, how will the other uh, heroes and villains react, and everyone caught in the middle, and in my opinion, it um, succeeded in um, exploring that, and a lot of people, like, hey, one last thing I'm going to touch on, a lot of people hate Sharon Michelle Gellar there, Buffy, uh, uh, being a cast as Tila, frickin' your cats and frickin', bu frickin Buffy Summers as Tila, and you're complaining, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. You know, anybody who grew up in the early 90s, or late 90s, I should say, and into the 2000s, who doesn't like Buffy <laughs> the Vampire Slayer, one of the original badass female characters, anyone who doesn't like Buffy the Vampire Slayer should have their nerd card, you know, taken away, in my opinion. Yeah, they really should. Now, I mean, still say, oh, she don't know how to emote. Well, I think she did a fine job, considering what she was given. 
And um, those people who don't agree, well, that's your opinion. You you have it, but I think you're wrong. And I think people are wrong detracting from this in general. And I don't think that um, Andra and um, Teal are going to become a lesbian couple at the end of this. You know, not that there's anything wrong with that. I don't think that's going to happen. And I uh, also don't think Andra is going to become the next E-man. Perhaps temporarily, but certainly not permanently. Because at the end of the day, there's a lot of toys to sell, a lot of He-Man and Skeletor merchandise to sell, so those characters are going to be in this in some capacity, and probably in their main capacity. That would be foolish and stupid, and I also think if anything, Teal is going to become the sorceress, which is interesting considering her views on magic, but she probably has that magic talent, and she's going to probably hook up with uh, He-Man if she hooks up with anyone. Yeah. At least now she knows the truth about him. I mean, this would be like uh, Clark Kent and Lois Lane that mentioned Superman earlier in the um, video. It would be like them hooking up and her, him not telling her first or not finding out that uh, he's like Superman. I mean, come on, that would ruin your marriage right there for sure. I mean, it would be, you know, like um, even if you hadn't had kids yet, that would ruin your marriage. That would be a horrible thing. Uh, any relationship. So, yeah, I think that's the way they're going in the end. Certainly into series two or three. I think that's, that's where they're going. Return to He-Man and Skeletor. Return to some type of status quo. Though. Who knows what's going to happen with Skeletor in particular. Um, he might end up laid really low after going really high. It'll be like Icarus. He's flying too close to the side. Now time to cut his wings and he's coming down. You know, the, that's what the villain deserves in a lot of ways. And to build himself up. And then there will be other threats like the Snake Man that we haven't really seen much of. And mentioned maybe. But um, yeah. That's where I think they're going, and she's going to become the sorceress, and he's going to become He-Man again, and they're probably going to eventually get hitched. That's where I think they're going. Anyone who thinks otherwise, I think, uh, well, I think you're wrong, and you're so excited, and you're just seeing, at the end of the day, what you want to see. There's a lot of that going around nowadays, unfortunately, with different properties. People are seeing a lot of what they want to see. On both sides of the aisle, as I say, I mean, I've heard of My Hero Academia recently, but the LGBTQ plus revealed character, a lot of people aren't happy with it because they want another character to be that, a more glamorous character, but they're just seeing what they want to see. Just that these people are seeing what they want to see, and they're just getting, you know, manufacturing outrage. You know, that's all it is nowadays with fan culture, a lot of toxicity and fan outrage. So yeah, great show, I highly recommend it. Uh, breaks the formula, but in a good way, it explores a lot of untrodden ground, four to five star. I can't wait for part two. Bye now.